This week, we're going to be reading the story, Johnny Appleseed. Johnny Appleseed goes up planting. But Johnny, the story of Johnny Appleseed is a tall tale. A tall tale means it's a story with unbelievable events or elements. So we're going to try to figure out what was unbelievable about Johnny Appleseed here. And then I have another Johnny Appleseed book that I'll read later. But story of Johnny Appleseed is a tall tale, which means it has um, unbelievable events or something that might be true, but it's exaggerated. Like, for example, um, the fish was so big, it nearly sank the boat. Meaning that the fish was huge, but could a fish actually sink a boat? Not if you're catching one, probably not. So Johnny Appleseed goes a-planting. Johnny Appleseed's real name was John Chapman. He got his nickname because he planted seeds everywhere he went. Johnny was born September 26, 1774 in Massachusetts. His father was a farmer. Johnny liked to help with the chores. Johnny's favorite chore was to take care of the apple orchard. He loved to climb the apple trees and pick their shiny red fruit. When Johnny was a young man, people began to move west to settle in Ohio and other faraway places. These pioneers had to clear land, build their own homes, and plant crops. They did not have time to plant apple trees. Johnny was sorry to hear that the pioneers did not have apple trees. He wished they could see the beautiful pink apple blossoms in the spring. He knew they would enjoy eating nice, chunky, or crunchy, sorry, crunchy apples in the fall. And then they would love to have hot apple pie in the winter. I must think of a way to help the pioneers, Johnny said. There's Johnny right there, Johnny Appleseed. Johnny wanted to give every family an apple tree to take to Ohio, but the pioneer wagons were already full of things they needed. No one had room for a tree. Then Johnny had a good idea. He decided to give the pioneers apple seeds to take with them. Whenever he ate ap an apple, he saved the seeds. Then he put them into a leather pouches and gave them to the pioneers who passed by his farm. You must build a small fence after you plant the seed, Johnny told the pioneers. Deer like to eat young plants, and you must keep the weeds from growing near the trees. The pioneers were thankful for the seeds, but they did not think they would have time to take care of the apple tree. One day, Johnny had a better idea. I'm going to Ohio, he told his mother and father. I will plant orchards for the pioneers. But you will be alone, said his father. You will miss your family and friends. There's Johnny right there. And you just can't go off into the wilderness by yourself, Johnny's mother added. Think of the wild animals. What if you get stuck in a snowstorm? And where would you sleep? I will sleep under the sky, said Johnny. The sky is the best roof anybody could ever have. There he is, sleeping under the sky with all the animals. Johnny's parents were still worried, but they could see that Johnny was determined to go. They helped Johnny pack his bag. His mother made him a warm coat and gave her, him her best cooking pan to use and make meals. Before Johnny left, he spotted a cider mill in town. The mill used a lot of apples to make cider. Johnny asked for some apple seeds. Take as many as you want, the owner said. Johnny took so many apple seeds that he couldn't fit everything into his bag. He decided to wear his pan on his head. This will make a nice hat, Johnny said. Look at all those apple seeds. Now, do you think that would actually happen? Do you think that is an exaggeration of an event? Probably so. It was not an easy trip. Johnny walked hundreds of miles with apple seeds. Sometimes Johnny would stop to help a farmer chop some wood or mend the fence. The families Johnny helped often invited him to dinner with them. Soon Johnny had many new friends. Johnny liked sleeping out under the stars, and his mother need not worry about the wild animals. All the forest creatures loved Johnny. One time, during a terrible snowstorm, Johnny even snuggled up inside a log with a big bear. That's an unbelievable event. A bear would never snuggle with a human. 
So this is an example of why Johnny Appleseed is a tall tale. When Johnny finally arrived in Ohio, he planted seeds along the riverbanks. He used bushes to make prickly fences to protect the seeds. Then Johnny moved to another place and planted more seeds, but he always made sure to go back and care for the shoots that were already growing. When the seedlings were big enough, John Lee could dug, dug them up. He took them to the Pioneer home so they could start their own apple orchard. In a few years, you will have apples to eat right off this tree, Johnny said. And in the spring, you'll see pink apple blossoms on the trees. There isn't a prettier sight anywhere. Johnny planted trees near hundreds of cabins in Ohio Valley. It wasn't long before people started calling him Johnny Appleseed. He helped the pioneers in the other ways too. He pulled up stumps, planted corn, and built furniture for their homes. The pioneer families looked forward to Johnny's visits. Wash up for supper! Children, the mothers would say, Johnny Appleseed's coming to visit us tonight. Johnny Appleseed spent his whole life helping people any way he could. Before he died in Ohio, the Ohio, the before he died, the Ohio Valley was blooming with apple blossoms, and some people today still think of Johnny Appleseed whenever they see the apple orchards.